What is going on guys welcome back in today's video we're going to implement an object recognition tool in python so let us get right into it all right so the first thing that we need to do is we need to set up the project structure because for this project we're going to need a couple of external files we're not going to just install some library and write some code we're going to need some external files because the object recognition will be done with a pre-trained model. We're not going to train the model ourselves. We're not going to test it ourselves. We're not going to build it ourselves. We're going to use a model that is already existent. Uh, and for this, we're going to go to github.com and we're going to go to the user chuwanki305. So I will put a link in the description down below to the repository mobile net SSD. And we're going to get a cafe model and a proto TXT file from here uh, that we're going to then use in Python using OpenCV to do the object recognition. Now, there are many ways to do that. You can use YOLO, you can use different models and algorithms and procedures. We're going to do it like that in this video. Maybe we're going to do it uh, in another way in another video. Uh, but in order to get the model file, you need to go here to the README and in Network Mobile Net SSD, you can go to Download Deploy. This is how you get the CAFE model. And the proto txt file is located in this directory here in VOC or, or VOC. Um, and what you want is the mobile net SSD deploy proto txt file. So you download these two files, you put them into your directory that you're working in. So you have this main py file, then you create, if you want to, a directory called models, and inside of it you have those two files. So you have the cafe model and you have the proto txt files. Uh, in addition to that, I also have a bunch of uh, images here. You can choose whatever images you like. I just have some images of rooms with people or streets because we're going to recognize some objects here. So trucks and uh, cars and people and tables and chairs and sofas and so on. Uh, those are going to be the images. You can choose whatever images you like, but put them in the same directory. Um, besides that, I want to mention that, of course, this code is heavily influenced by this repository here because that's the guy um, that provided the models here or this is where I got the models and the knowledge from and of course also uh, I want to mention here that I got a fair bit of inspiration from the website Pi Image Search I think that's what it called. it's called uh, I got some of the knowledge on how to use that model from that site so I want to give credit to them even though they were not my main source and not my only source because I looked at a couple of different repositories and blocks I think it's fair to give credit to them since I uh, learned how to use this um, this model properly using their blog post okay so besides that we're going to start with opening up cmd and we're going to install the libraries that we're going to need today we're going to need numpy so pip install numpy uh, and we're going to need opencv so pip install opencv-python those are the two libraries that we're going to need um, and once we have installed them i already have installed them so i'm not going to do this again we are going to import numpy as np and we're going to import cv2 which is OpenCV, even though we install OpenCV-Python, we import CV2. All right, so the first thing is we're going to specify all the paths to the relevant files. So we want to know, okay, where's the image that we're going to do the object recognition on? Uh, where are the models? Where's the proto.txt file? Uh, and the first thing is the image. So image path is going to be just, uh, let's start with roompeople.jpg, uh, then the proto txt path is going to be models slash and then mobile net ssd deploy proto txt and then the model path is going to be model slash mobile net blah 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 dot cafe model uh, and we're also going to already set a parameter because you need to think about it like that. When we detect or when the model detects a certain object in an image, it has a certain confidence. So if it sees a chair, it can say, okay, I'm 99% sure that this is a chair classified as a chair. Maybe it will say I have a 15% confidence that this is going to be a chair. We need to set a minimum confidence. And if this minimum confidence is not reached by the model, it's not going to do any uh, detection. So it's not going to say, okay, this is a chair if it's not confident enough. And a min confidence that I think works pretty good is 20%. So 0 0.2. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Next, we need to have a classes list. And this is something that, of course, you need to get from the repository. You need to know the classes for this particular 
uh, module here or for this particular model here. Um, and those classes are going to be specified in a list. So we're going to have a list of classes and those are things like a background. Those are things like uh, airplane and uh, bicycle and so on. I'm going to copy that list now. So if you want to copy it as well, you can go to the repository and look at the individual classes. Uh, or you can just pause the video and type this code here. It's not too big, but I don't want to waste any time in the tutorial here typing all these strings. It's not really educational, so we're going to skip that. Those are all the classes that we're going to be able to classify. So birds, cows, cats, uh, person, motorbike, uh, train, TV monitor, and so on. Uh, those are the things. And now we're going to start with the model. Um, so before we actually before we actually import a model, we also need to think a little bit about how are we going to then display later on that we detected an object. And what we're going to do is we're just going to say if the model detects this guy as a person, it's going to just put a rectangle around him. So it's going to say, okay, this here, this area is a person. And if we have a bunch of people, we want to have the same color of the red angle. So let's say all the people are classified as blue, for example. Uh, if we want to have that, uh, we want to have a specific color. Then again, if we classify this as a sofa, we want it to not be blue, but something else, for example, green or red or something else. And in order to have random colors, we're going to generate a colors list by saying colors equals and then np.random.uniform. And uh, we're going to generate values from 0 to 255. And the size that we're going to generate is going to be... Um, the length of the classes list. So we're going to have a color for each class and we're going to generate three values for it. So RGB basically from zero to 255. The problem is that sometimes this random uniform distribution will result in pretty bad choices for colors. So we're going to have very similar colors. Uh, if you want to use a seat or if you want to always get the same results, you can use a seat. And in order to use a seat, you need to say np.random.seat. And by doing that, by specifying a certain uh, value here, you're going to always get the same quote unquote random result. It's going to be a determined random result. Uh, and a seat that worked quite well for me is 543210. This worked quite well. Got some good colors there. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to load the neural network into our script. We're going to load the pre-trained model. We don't need to train it. We don't need to do anything with it. We only need to load it and then we need to feed some data into it for prediction. So we're going to say net equals cv2.dnn.read net from cafe. We're going to provide the proto.txt path as a first parameter and a model path as a second parameter. And all we need to do now is we need to forward an image into that model and then we're going to get the result uh, of the detection or classification, you could say, and we can then apply this and draw this onto the images. So what we need to do is we need to load an image, we need to resize this image so that it fits into the neural network because the neural network accepts uh, 300 by 300 pixels as far as I know. Um, and then we need to get a prediction, then resize the image again and draw the detections onto the image. So we're going to first say image equals cv2.imread and we're going to read the image path here. And then we're going to save, we're going to store the current shape. So we're going to say height and weight is going to be image.shape0 and image.shape1 uh, like that. Uh, we're going to save it and then we're going to create a blob object. A block object uh, or a blob stands for binary large object. This is what a blob stands for. And we're going to say blob equals cv2.dnn uh, blob from image and we're going to say cv2.resize. So we're going to fit an image here and we're going to resize it to 300 times 300. There you go. Uh, the second parameter is the scale factor. The scale factor um, is something that you keep, uh, can play around with. Uh, basically, what the what what the image is multiplied with, we're going to use 0 0.007 here. Um, then we're going to specify the size of the image, which is obviously 300 times 300. And then in the end, what was the last parameter? It's the mean. It's something that is subtracted. So in this case, 130. Uh, is a value you can play around with these two values. So with this value and with this 
value you can play around and see if you get better results if you increase or decrease them slightly uh, just experiment around with that but now we have this blob object and in order to get the prediction what we do is we say net dot set input and we pass the blob object so we have this blob object we set it as the input of the net and now as a next step we say detected objects is going to be net dot feed uh, not feed uh, net dot forward so we set the input we forward and then we get a result here as a return value so technically speaking, we're now done with the object detection, but of course we need to visualize it. And as a first step, we're going to just take a look at this thing here that was returned by the forward function, these detected objects. And we're just going to print detected objects and I'm going to say zero, zero, zero. I'm going to explain that in a second here. Uh, when I run this here, we're going to see that we have a bunch of values here. And how this works is that we have a bunch of different objects that were detected in the image. And this is the first object. This is the data for the first object that was detected in the image. And if I want to change this to the second object that was detected, I just changed this third number here. So this now would be the second object which was detected. As you can see here, I can change this to, provided that we have enough objects, of course, I can change this to 15. I'm not sure if we have 15 objects. Let's see. No, it doesn't seem like that. So let's say eight the eighth uh, or actually the ninth object was detected you can see some other values and what we have here is this thing is the class index so 18 would be the 18th element of this list here or maybe the 19th element depending on uh, how it's indexed so this is the class this is the actual thing that our model classified or detected and here we have some coordinates so uh, or actually this here is the confidence and those are the coordinates so this is the class this is the confidence, this is the upper left x coordinate, this is the upper left y coordinate, and this is the lower right x coordinate and the lower right um, y coordinate. And how this works is that all those values are normalized so we can multiply them by the image height and by the image width and we're going to get the actual uh, coordinates of these pixels. And this is how we're going to actually draw these rectangles around the objects. So let's get into coding. We're going to say for i in range. And we're going to say for i in range detected objects dot shape two. So depending on how many objects we have detected, we're going to say confidence for this particular detection confidence equals int of detected objects now zero, zero, i one this is how we get the confidence um no this is the class index sorry this is two is the confidence one is a class index uh so we get the confidence like that and what we do then is we say okay if the confidence is larger than the minimum confidence we need for detection then we're going to draw a rectangle and put a text there so we're going to say okay the class index that was recognized here is going to be int detected objects and I think we can actually also specify like that. So zero comma zero I one, I think this should work as well. So this basically is the same as this. Of course, here we have a two and here we have a one, but I think the way of writing it is also fine like that. Um, so class index is that then we're going to get the coordinates, we're going to say upper left x is going to be int detected objects. Um, and we're going to say zero zero I three important we need to multiply this with the width because uh, of course we have this normalized value for x and we want to multiply it with what we had uh, here oh by the way i see that i used uh, weight here we want to have this as width obviously um, and we're going to multiply that by that value so we're going to copy that and we're going to say upper left y is going to be index 4 times height like that and then we're going to say lower right x is going to be five times width and then lower right y is going to be six times height so we then have the exact coordinates of the corners and you need to think about it like that if this is the upper left and this is the lower right, I know that all this is the person. 
uh, this is how we're going to plot this. Um, but first we're going to craft a prediction text. So we're going to say prediction text is going to be an F string and we're just going to say classes class index. So yeah, actually this is um, if we have the index 18, this means that this is the class 19. So the 19th class, but it's the index 18 and we start at zero. So uh, that was what I wanted to say before. And we start here with the class index, uh, the class of the class index. So if we have 18, it's going to go to index 18 and give us that uh, give us that string here. And we're going to have that in the text. And as a second thing, we also want to know the confidence. How sure are you that this is whatever it is, or whatever you think it is. So we're going to say confidence, we're going to format that as uh, two decimal places, a float with two decimal places. So we have the prediction text, and we now only need to draw the rectangle and put the text there. So we're going to say cv2 dot rectangle. Uh, and what we pass here is, of course, the image itself, then a tuple of upper left x and upper left y as a second thing the lower right x and the lower right i uh, y not i uh, and then of course the color that we have so colors class index hopefully well randomized and then three uh, and finally we say cv2 put text and I have a bunch of parameters here. I just need to look at them because parameters are always confusing me. Never learn parameters, uh, never memorize parameters, always look up the documentations or your sample code. Uh, so here we have image again, we have prediction text that we just crafted. Uh, and then we have the position. So we're going to say upper left x. And then we're going to say upper left y minus 15. If this is for the text, if the text fits in, we're just going to put it there. Otherwise, we're going to put it either above or below. So we're going to say upper left y minus 15. If upper left y itself has enough space to put that there. So if it's above 30, else we're just going to say upper left y uh, plus 15. Right. So like that. And then we're going to also pass the font so cv2 maybe we should do a line break in here somewhere let's just see there you go and let's make one more cv2 dot font come on font and we're going to use the simplex where is it this simplex font here 0 0.6 here and as a color again class index and two. By the way, all those parameters are just designed. So they're not not important for the actual detection process. You can play around with them, you can change them. This is just design stuff. Uh, and once we have that we're done, and we only need to show the image. So we're going to say cv2 dot show some title, I don't know, some detected objects or something. And then the image. And cv2 dot Wait key zero, and maybe we should also say CV2 destroy all windows. There you go. So let's see if we didn't make any mistakes and if it works. There you go. Uh, but we don't have any predictions. Why is that? Did we have, did we forget something, some scaling or something like that? Let me just see. Um, maybe let's turn down the confidence. Maybe that's the issue. But I don't think so. I think we have some other problem here. Okay, I'm going to take a look at that and then come back to you. All right, it wasn't too much of a big deal. Uh, we have two problems. First of all, we have to pass a tuple here. So in the put text function, when we pass upper left x and this uh, uh, statement here with the if and else, we need to put that into a tuple. So we need to start here and end it here because the same way that we put it here in a tuple, we need to put it here in a tuple. Um, and second of all, we have the problem that we're using in here, even though we shouldn't be using in here, because for the confidence, of course, uh, we're never going to get anything um, other than zero point something. So we're always going to get zero if we go with in. So that was not a very intelligent choice. Uh, we need to remove this in here. This was a mistake. And we need to put this into a tuple. And then it works because then I can just go with run main. And you can see that we get the classifications here. You can see 50% that this is a sofa. This is not quite right. Uh, it says this is a chair. I mean, yeah, could be a chair or a sofa. Uh, this is a person, this is a person, this is a person, this is a person. 
Uh, what do we have else here? We have a dining table. This is also quite right. Let's change the image to just room.jpg, which is another image of a room with people. You can see person, 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 dining table, chair and chair. So this is fine. Now let's go to the street and we're going to see that. Uh, what is it? Oh, jpeg.jpg. No, just street.jpg. And then you can see, okay, we have car, 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 person, 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 person. Uh, now I don't know if we have something like truck. Doesn't seem like we have something like truck, maybe bus, but I didn't re uh, recognize a bus because there is no bus. Uh, do we have any bicycles here? No, I don't see any. So this is quite, uh, quite good as you can see. Again, if you change the seat, you're going to get different colors. So let's compare again the first image that we have. What was it? Room people .jpg. And let's look at the colors. You can see that we have turquoise for person. We have blue for chair. We have uh, green for dining table and pink or purple for sofa. If I change the seat, we're going to get different um, values. So if I do something like that, we're going to get different colors as you can see. And if I don't provide any seat at all, we're always going to get different colors. So one time we're going to get it like that. Another time if I run this, we're going to get a different color. So if you want to keep it consistent, you provide a seat five, four, uh, what was it? Five, four, three, two, one, zero is a pretty good one. In my opinion, you're always getting, this, uh, getting the, sa uh, the same colors as you can see here. And this is how you implement object detection in Python. Now, last but not least, I also want to show you how you can apply that live to your camera data. So let's go ahead and uh, not load a static image like this one. Let's get rid of that. Uh, and let's make a camera here. Let's say cap equals CV2 dot video capture. And we're going to pass zero, which is the first camera. I only have one, so it's going to pick uh, this one uh, anyways. And then we're going to say while true. And what we want to do all the time is we want to get a uh, red and frame or actually let's call it image red and image from cap dot read. So we're going to constantly read the camera data. And as a result, we're going to get the image from the camera. So this image that you see uh, on the top right corner at the moment, it's going to be the image that we feed uh, into the neural network. So we're going to take all this and indent it. And then the process is the same. So we get this image here. This is the second parameter. Actually, we can name this to just be underscore because we're not going to use it. Uh, we take this image, we do the same process that we did before, and then we classify everything in this im show here needs to be uh, inside here as well. So we're going to just um, indent this here as well. Let me just see if it's correct. Every time, yeah, with each iteration, we're just going to show the image. And I think that should actually be it. Uh, we're just going to put the wait key in here as well. And in the end, we're going to do destroy all uh, windows and cap dot release. So I think that should work. Now, in order to show you that it works, I need to turn off this camera real quick. So I'm going to uh, disable it and then we're going to do a demonstration. All right, so I have now disabled the camera for recording and we can use it in Python. One thing that I changed here is I changed this from zero to five. This is important because zero uh, will just freeze your image. You wanna have it at one, two, three, four, five. I don't know what, uh, just pick a number here. This determines the FPS. Uh, just don't pick zero. And once you have that, you can just run this and you're going to see that it's going to use the camera data for the object detection. Um, and once it's loaded, you should see a camera. There you go. Um, so you can see here person with 99% confidence chair. Now this is not a chair back then, uh, back there. Uh, the problem is, of course, if we look at the classes here, uh, there is not really much that it can classify maybe a bottle. Do I have a bottle in here somewhere? Not really. I have honey. Let's see if that works. Uh, so yeah, I mean, yeah, it classifies it as, as a bottle, as you can see here. I mean, it's not a bottle, so we cannot really blame it for not classifying it as a bottle. Uh, but it seems to work kind of, uh, we can classify sheeps and horses. I don't have sheeps, horses, dogs here. Uh, the chair, I don't know, maybe if I stand up, it's going to classify this as a chair or maybe if I turn around a little bit here, no. Uh, however, as you can see, it works live with camera data as well. All right, so that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.